Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church in Cincinnati. I'm Pastor Greg Enerline, and by the time you see this video, I'll be in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now, Fort Wayne, Indiana isn't quite the ends of the earth, but I'm going there for a good reason, and it is to help sharing the good news of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That's because for the first time ever, I've been asked to be a baptismal sponsor for Mackenzie Joy Keener. Now, usually, I'm just asked to do the baptizing. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which takes place 50 days after Easter. It was originally created to celebrate the gathering of the wheat harvest. It was also, however, one of the three pilgrimage festivals of Jerusalem, which meant that the Israelites were expected to travel to Jerusalem to worship in the temple and offer sacrifices on these three festivals. Now, daily sacrifices were offered every single day, but on these pilgrimage festivals, wherever Israelites were gathered throughout the Promised Land, they were expected to come and journey into Jerusalem. However, Pentecost is not just 50 days after Passover because of the wheat harvest. It's believed that the Israelites traveled for 50 days after Passover and arrived at Mount Sinai to receive the Torah then. In other words, the Israelites received their freedom from Pharaoh at the Passover, but it wasn't until 50 days later that they arrived at Mount Sinai and signed and agreed to a new covenant as God's people and agreed to the Torah. We too celebrate Pentecost 50 days after Passover. It was on Good Friday and Easter that Jesus won us the victory over sin, over death, and over the devil. But it wasn't until 50 days later on Pentecost when the disciples received the new covenant of God written on their hearts when God sent his Holy Spirit to them. On Pentecost, Jerusalem was filled with devout Jews who had traveled from throughout the Roman Empire. But there was a problem. These Jews who traveled, they all spoke the languages of the lands where they lived. They didn't speak Hebrew. However, the worship service and the sacrifices were all, were all carried out in Hebrew, which presented a bit of a challenge, to say the least. These people probably felt disconnected, isolated, maybe even bored. However, on this particular Pentecost, all of a sudden, ordinary Jewish men were speaking to them, the apostles. These visitors were used to feeling disconnected, but now these men were preaching to them. They began to hear a sermon from Peter, and his sermon was compelling, intriguing, and convicting. In fact, Peter convicted all those present of being complicit in rejecting Yahweh's plan of salvation and actually killing the Messiah he sent. Their sorrow over sin thankfully led to their repentance and to baptism into the new covenant people of God. In Jesus, we know that it's no longer about being perfect or about commitment to a particular set of rules like the Torah. Rather than being led by legislation, we are now led by the spirit of the living Christ. Plus, those tongues of fire weren't just fancy pyrotechnics. They were signs of God's powerful presence among his people. You see, at Mount Sinai, God had used smoke and fire to announce his presence on a mountain. But now, God used these tongues of fire to announce his presence not on a mountain, but among a people. So what began at Pentecost still continues with us today. The Holy Spirit uses sorrow over sin to lead to repentance, baptism, and redemption in Christ. What brings this home for us today is that right here in our own facilities, the good news of Jesus Christ is preached in English, Oromo, and Amaric. Now we just need a Spanish-speaking church, so if you got any leads, let me know. Uh, but seriously, what a privilege it is to see with our own two eyes and hear with our own two ears the gospel being shared. And we know that it doesn't matter what the language is or what the music style is. What matters is that Jesus Christ is preached and that repentance and baptism and forgiveness of sins are shared in his name. And we're all one and in this together in Christ our Lord. Now, every congregation throughout the world is part of this uh, multi-ethnic heartbeat of the gospel, but what a privilege that we get to witness it ourselves and our own facilities. If we take the New Testament church as our guide, we might guess that we'll have some challenges, setbacks, and growing pains that need to be worked out along the way, but we'll also have great joys and partnership in the gospel. And what a joy it is not only to be able to celebrate Pentecost, but to live it out in this very place. In Jesus' name, amen.